Hey everyone, welcome back to another interesting episode of the Retro Gamers Podcast. Uh, episode number 229, Larry here. And Anthony here. <laughs> and it looks like we have a guest, possibly. We have a baby. But we very, very hairy baby. I have a very hairy baby who is just slung over my shoulder. That is like full weight on his shoulder. That cat, I've never seen a cat more comfortable in my life. I know, but we're going to put him down in a second, right? Oh. We're going to put you down. <laughs> I don't think he's going to want to move. No, he doesn't want to move. Holy cow. That is, I do that with my parents' cat. He just launches right off me. Yeah, no, this one, I'd sling him over my shoulder and he's just like, he's just like thud. And he's like, can, I'm good here. I'm, I'm pretty good. sure you can go outside with him like that. <laughs> yeah, you might enjoy that. You're going to enjoy that? You're going to enjoy, hi. <laughs> Who are you? What are you doing? He's, he's like, what are you doing? Let me, let me sleep. Yeah, yeah but basically watch. I found I'm a, trying to rest here. I found a comfortable spot on this human shoulder. Basically. All right. So we're going to go down now Uh-oh. because I have to do my show. Oh, see? <laughs> He's very amenable. Now he's going to destroy everything. Yeah, now he's just going to destroy the couch. So, <laughs> like, you put me down? Oh, gosh. Awesome. So here uh, we are. Here we are. Yes. Yeah, so and actually, I think we got a, a, a good full episode going on. Uh, we got some fun stuff to talk about this week. That uh, we do. What, uh, just out of curiosity, I did not watch it yet. Uh, did, you ch- did you check out Mortal Kombat yet? Uh, considering the fact that we're recording on Saturday and it just came out yesterday and I worked? No. Okay, fair enough. Um, I'm hearing amazing things about it. Like all but one person I know. Yes. Briefly enjoyed the movie. I've gen- I've generally heard mixed reviews, but I've heard oh, enough. Okay. Like I've heard more good than bad. So mm-hmm. uh, I do plan on checking it out. And I think maybe we uh, we review it next week's episode. Maybe. You know, next week's I'm episode. just uh, moving the camera. I kind of forgot where I am. Trying to uh, do yeah. a horror movie setup because the door behind you now, I want to see somebody creep out of it. That'd be, that'd be weird. <laughs> that'd be awesome. <laughs> I wouldn't even tell you. Oh, well, thank you. At I would just I had, be like, I'd just be like this. At least I had the wherewithal to, to give you, uh, inform you when I saw someone, a shadow walk past your door that day. Oh, the ghost that lived Yeah, there? so many months ago. Um, but in any event, yeah, I'm actually here, still here, uh, my cousin's a uh, couple more days here, then I'll be back yep. in my humble abode. Yep, so. and I am in my humble abode as always. There we go. I like it. Yes. Um, yes, I'm really, a, but again, Mortal Kombat, I'm hearing amazing things about it. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I'm going to look forward to it. HBO Max, uh, or if you're able to get out to a theater, wherever you are, uh, definitely yep. check it out. So yes, we'll talk about that next week. Yes, uh, absolutely. Yeah, and I have to, I think I have to sign up with HBO Max just so I can watch it and then cancel. Oh, I'm, I'm kind of surprised. I thought you would you would have HBO Max. No, I, I'm I'm a uh, rotating streaming service guy. Fair enough. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to pay like top dollar for all these things. And right now I have. Uh, what do I have right now? Because now I just got I got rid of Netflix. Okay. Um, I'm one of those people. Now. No, I don't it's blame like, you. It's a yeah, great idea to do. Yeah. Yeah. So now I'm just on I'm on Disney Plus and Hulu. Okay. Is that all I have? I feel like those are the yearly subscriptions. Yeah, Hulu is my yearly subscription, okay. but it was like they had it on sale like at Christmas time for like two bucks a month, and I'm like, okay, I'll that's pay two bucks a month for that. That's why I have HBO Max. It was like sign up six months up front for like twenty percent off. I was like, okay, yeah, exactly. So yeah. I have uh, I have Hulu, and then I have uh, I have Disney Plus, and I think that's it. Wow, yeah. have I cut it down that much? <laughs> I have. Oh, yeah, w- yeah. So to say, WWE Network is gone. Yeah, that um, moved to Peacock. Yes, yeah, so. Peacock. I, well, I have a free subscription to Peacock. For, How do you have that? Well, for oh, reasons. Man. All right, whatever. Well, for I'm doing pro- professional reasons. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're in the biz, the show biz. I am sorry. I'm still in the biz, even though I live in Florida. <laughs> um, I have Peacock. Too. I did the two dollars fifty cents a month sign up. You know, for four uh, months yeah. for ten dollars, not realizing it's the it's the uh, the ad one where the ads pop up every so you two just minutes. have to watch a few commercials. What's hate, the end of the world? I hate commercials. I'm doing that on Hulu for two bucks a month. It's like it takes so it takes me a half an hour to watch an episode of Cheers. That's what it was like when it was on TV. <laughs> Cheers is on Hulu. Yes. Oh, it's on Paramount too. I thought. They yeah, were, ever since I thought Fred, they were pulling all these. Once I lost access to Friends, Cheers has been my sitcom that I fall asleep to. I've been binge watching Frasier. I'm on season nine. I couldn't get past season two. You know what it is? I know we're way, but this is retro. These shows are retro. So I'm yeah, gonna, sorry. I'm we're doing a little retro TV. Sorry, That's okay. guys. Um, actually, Paramount Plus mm-hmm. has Nick Arcade. Yes. And I saw that and now I want Paramount Plus. Um, <laughs> but I have a friend who works 
for them. So I'm looking for a hookup. Oh. <laughs> How dare you? Uh, I don't I think I have a, I think I have a friend that works for almost every service. You know what? I, I was talking to my parents the other day and, and my parents, you know, they're like, oh, so-and-so's coming over uh, to help out with the plumbing. And then so-and-so's coming over to help out the, elect- the, um, the, uh, the uh, electricity and everything mm-hmm. like that. Um, because my parents, that's very old school. Like parent, like everyone knows someone in a trade. So mm-hmm. my dad has friends for everything they need to be done to build a house. Yeah. You know what I mean? Us, we know people who can get us access possibly to apps. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's apps, it's video games, welcome. it's stuff like that. Welcome welcome to the now. Um, yes. I'll say real quick and then I'll move on, which actually could uh, translate to gaming as well. Because I've been watching Frasier. You know, I was in like my mid, mid to late teens when the show started. I didn't get any of the jokes back then, but now I'm getting all the jokes. I think you were younger than that. Uh, well, no, it was early 93. 90s. Early 90s, yeah. Yeah, no, so I was 13. Oh, okay. Um, but now I get the jokes. Mm-hmm. And kind of the same thing with video games. Like when I go back and play a lot of the old games, um, not that I get the jokes, there's really no jokes, but like my patience is different mm-hmm. now. Actually, I have a little bit more patience. And I have back then. Yes, I know, which... Which, is, which I find funny. We flip-flopped on that. Yeah, we did flip-flop on it. I mean, granted, I still finish games more than you do. This is but, true. This is very but true. I just have less patience when I play them. <laughs> so you get through them quick. Exactly. It's like, can I finish this already? Jesus Christ. Like, <laughs> Speaking of which, I think we'll, get, in, we'll yes. get into it right now. Uh, so we yes. have some interesting topics. So one thing I want to talk about first uh, to kind of bring people up to speed in my dilemma. Mm, you always have a dilemma. I do, and I don't know why. I really... Because, you, because you're constantly shopping. I, no. No, maybe, yeah. but like, I, I don't bring it upon myself. Um, though in watching Frasier, maybe I'm getting some psychological, uh, you know, uh, psychiatry that I'm, I'm, I'm delving into my deeper self. Oh, like Lord. Um, so last week we talked about how I canceled Polymega and I, per- and I picked up Analog. Correct. So now, as of this recording, it's been two weeks and one day since I placed my analog order. Uh, nothing is shipped yet. Mm-hmm. And it's really worrying me. Mm-hmm. Um, I, analog is a company, great company, but on their website, they specifically say they do not respond to social media questions. So, because I tried messaging them on Instagram and on Twitter before I read this, and you know, they just never got back to me. And then I read the website. I'm like, all right. So I submit an email and we do kind of go back and forth with the emails, but it's weird not being able like to, like to directly contact someone through social media, kind of like in the now. Right. Um, to be like, Hey, look, I'm just curious what's going on. Cause my order includes a system, the NT mini that they're discon- They're no longer going to make it. So I want to make sure that it's going through. And when I placed my order, even though I got a confirmation, when I placed my order, my credit card declined it at first. Um, I have funds. Just the credit card doesn't recognize, I guess, where it was coming from. Apple, it does it a little more because I have an Apple card. Mm-hmm. But then I think, you know, I got through it and I placed the order. What I also did was a friend of mine was looking for a mini NT or the, or the NT mini noir. And I'm like, all right, let me see if I can place another order for that separately. And I was able to, and I had it shipped to him directly. So I didn't okay. buy two. You know, he went to one. Of course, he got his last week. Of course it did. So I placed the order like a half hour later, mm-hmm. and he got his first. Yeah, it makes sense. So now I'm like, what is going on? I email Analog, and they're like, oh, sorry, you know, we will, actually, I sent you a picture of the thing. You know, uh, sorry about the delay. We will contact our shipper and get you out of confirmation ASAP. It's been a couple of days. I mean, I feel like ASAP could have been a little bit better than that. Mm-hmm. Here's my other concern. And again, I, this can happen to any company. So this is not a knock on analog. I want to say that right now. But my buddy who got the NT Mini texted me and says that it doesn't work. Oh, It's not booting up. Hmm. And, and you can go to the website. The NT Mini was $500. Wow. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. So then I now I got to contact analog. So now I'm the okay. middleman. And again, no reflection on my friend, no reflection on analog. I feel bad 
because now there's a third person involved and you mm-hmm. know telephone the telephone game is played works. for a reason yes so now i'm trying to sync everything up and and i tried emailing analog like hey email my friend directly he'll be in contact with you and of course who gets the response i do of course so i'm like uh so I'm, I'm actually going out to see him today you know maybe we can try and fix this thing but i'm just very concerned because i cancel my poly mega order and i can't get it back even if i wanted to mm-hmm. if there's a super issue with the analog mm-hmm. and one final thing i'll mention like you know someone waiting like for their prom date to show up and i keep checking my emails like a madman waiting for responses from analog which usually arrive like late at night because I, I don't know if they're here in the UK or something like that. Right. So I, I, it's driving me nuts. I need help. I need professional help. You, you need professional help in the sense of you need some patience. That's one. Um, and two, you need to stop like buying everything. Oh, but to be fair, I canceled an order and I bought something else. So that's right. And that, and look what happened. You should have just waited. <laughs> I it's know like, I have, it's, it's like it's like the retro freak problem. No, that was diff- that was something different. A, you bought it for me. B, in a different country, and C, the stupid thing didn't work. Wait, wait, wait! I didn't buy it for you. Oh no, you're right. I'm sorry. I, no, I ordered it. You, no, you're right. You're right. Right. I offered to buy it for mm-hmm. you in Japan, but you said no, no, no. I ordered it from Europe, and I'm like, okay. And then you threw it out. Now that I think about it, no, no, the. European Genesis cartridges are the same size, I think, as American. Yeah, but you told me you told me you bought it from like the UK or something like that. No, I did. You, yeah, and you said when you got it, there was the issue with the Genesis cartridges. And yep. I said, yeah, I go. They do stick a little bit, but you only have no, to no, no. The, you only have to put the cartridges once, and then copy the game over to an SD card, and you're fine. No, no, no. You you, you misunderstood me when I said the cartridge literally w- was not sized properly. Oh, right. Well, okay. I should say the Retro Freak wasn't sized properly for the cart because the Retro Freak wouldn't even take its own Game Gear adapter. Probably. Well, I mean, did you check to see if like... I EU, measured it. No, no, no. But EU cartridges were different than US cartridges? The Retro Freak's own adapter oh. would not fit into the Genesis cart. That's, that, see, and the simple solution to that would have been send it back. It would have cost me $100. Get, and get a replacement. It would well, cost okay. me because I emailed. Right. Them. No, no, I understand that. I go, but how much has it been costing you now? <laughs> At this point, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking. Still... You know, I know. But look, bottom line is whatever it is that it, um, with that, I, I just think throwing it out was the bad idea. Well, oh, I agree with you 100. percent I've never said throwing it out was a smart idea. That yeah. was just me being frustrated. I been, right. I would have at least gotten a refund. I would have been like, I'll send it back to you. Give me a refund. At that point, I figured I've wasted so much money. What's another whatever I spent on it? Oh, Larry. That was just me. That was me being me. Meanwhile, I've got mine sitting right here. It's very pretty. <laughs> I love it. But it doesn't play everything. These analogs will play everything. Well, this plays pretty much every cartridge-based mm-hmm. system that I need. No, I meant like homebrews, hacks, flash. Oh, yeah. Um, I haven't tested that yet. Because yeah, it's emulation, so it may or may not. Right. I, I haven't tested a homebrew. Yeah. Uh, I don't even think. I don't know if I have a homebrew. Do I? You got those Zelda games. Yeah, I should try. I'll I'll test it. I will okay. test the Zelda game on it, and we'll see if it works. Fair enough. I mean, I'm not, not on the show, it. of course. But <laughs> no, I know you're not buying it. But um, but it, I, it it's just when you talk about the analog and the polymag and all that stuff, it just makes you. of your retro freak issue. <laughs> um, that just made me laugh when you threw it out. So I really oh god, I'm so mad. God. Um, I was so happy when I bought that in Japan. <laughs> I miss Japan. You know, and Japan, speaking of Japan, I was going to say, you know, Japan. Japan is an interesting uh, situation because you did fall in love with Japan when you were traveling over there. Yeah, um, I really and, did. And talk about spending money. I think you probably spent more money in Japan, game wise then I probably would have if I would have kept the polymega order. Which is very true, but also consider the situation. Um, I was only traveling there for work. Mm-hmm. I also knew that I was only traveling there for, you know, a limited amount of time. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know how many trips to Japan I was going to go, uh, I was going to do. Uh, and I tried to take advantage every time I went there by picking up games 
you know, at the video game stores there. So yes, I did spend a lot of money on video games in Japan, but it was like one of those things where it's like, take advantage of the opportunity while you have it. Cause I knew it was like, it, was, it wasn't going to be a situation where it's like, I'm living there and I can go whenever I want. It's mm. just like, I'm only here for a week. Let me swing by and see what I can pick up. I'm all right. Or I'm here for two weeks. All right. I'll swing by and see what I can pick up. Um, as opposed to, you know, I live here and I can mm -hmm. get it whenever I want. So that's, th that's the reason why, like I took advantage of that. And to be honest with you, even still, I don't think I spent like a ton of money uh, when you consider like, let's say I would, I probably traveled there like, I think, a dozen times. Okay. Uh, with my job, I'd probably say if I spent on average maybe a hundred bucks each time on average. Really? Probably. I thought it was a little more than that. Okay. Maybe a hundred to one hundred fifty each time at most. And the only reason why I say that is because there were trips where I didn't go. I didn't get a chance to buy. So I'm just averaging it out <laughs> over the trips. It's just some trips were really like very labor intensive or short. Mm -hmm. Like some trips I took were only like, oh, I'm on the ground for three days. I didn't have time to go. You know, gotcha. that's why I'm saying like I maybe spent a hundred bucks mm -hmm. a trip on average. Yeah. So which isn't bad when you think about it. I mean, no, you, no. you 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 spent that in probably the last hour. <laughs> maybe because uh, analog may be charging me again for everything. Um, and go. also you were my, uh, you were, you were my, uh, expense mule, uh, in those trips. Over well, Japan. yeah. And that's the other thing. It's like the extra money that I wound up spending was for you. <laughs> so. But a but, little bit of Japan has finally come home to the U S it has because my favorite store in Japan and the world renowned, I might add, yes. a lot of people know about this store, even if you've never been to Japan, uh, super potato who yeah. we, who we talked about ad nauseum when i was doing my travels the the unofficial retro video game store of the land of the rising sun yes absolutely and the by the way i uh it was only i think a week ago uh not even a week ago i think it was a couple of days ago where i got one of those um annual reminders on facebook that it's been <laughs> it's been four years since we opened Has minion it really? it's been four years since minion park opened oh, at universal yes. japan so I was getting like all the picture updates and like four years since I went to Tokyo Disney and all this stuff. And I'm like, and I'm like, ah, oh, it's been four years since Super Potato. No, it's been three years since Super Potato <laughs> because I went to Japan for another thing that opened in like June of 18. Mm -hmm. So so it's been like three years since I've been to Super Potato, which is very depressing when I think about it because I love Super <laughs> Potato. Um, but anyway, the great yes. news to come out, I think about a week ago mm -hmm. or so, is that Super Potato now has an online shop on eBay. Yes, so the everyone in the US and North America, I guess in the world, I don't know how eBay yep. works, uh, now has access to Super Potato, which might be a good thing, might be a bad thing. Very uh, dangerous. It's gonna be very good for Super Potato, don't get me wrong. Oh, it's gonna be great for them. You can find them on eBay uh, at uh, super potato underscore retro underscore games. Yep. And um, I highly recommend them for any type of um, Japanese game that you're looking for. Like the, the, qua um, the quality is amazing. Like they, the, like they take care of their stuff. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I've brought stuff back. I mean, Larry, you have stuff where it's like yep. things are like in box and practically pristine, you know? So um, they really take care of their stuff. Their cartridges always work. Um, you definitely get, a good bang for your buck. Now, granted, when I was looking at the prices on eBay, I'm pretty sure they're marked up a little bit. I'm sure um, that I wanted to ask you about that, uh, yeah. looking through and, and, and granted, it's been three years. Who knows? Yes. These might be the prices. It's true. But um, co comparatively speaking, how do you feel about the prices? And even if you were to factor in a little inflation? Yeah. I mean, looking at the prices, I thought that they were a little bit, a little bit higher, but not like, not to the point where it's like, oh my God, they're so expensive. I wouldn't buy them. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the shipping charges, and that's where yeah. my question comes in. I mean, they, they want to charge 20 bucks per cartridge. And I'm wondering if you buy multiple ones, will it just be one charge for that shipping? Or do you have to pay 20 bucks for each cartridge? Mm -hmm. yeah. So a uh, question I need to find out because I do want to pick up some stuff from Super Potato. Yeah. And there is some, in fact, I just randomly clicked on a game because I, was, I wanted to look into that shipping part of it. Because mm -hmm. you're any look, look, 20 bucks shipping from Japan. I'll take it. Yeah, no, that's not bad. Um, but I hear, I hear you talking about with the multiplying. I clicked on a game. Uh, basically, it's Guerrilla War. Yep. In box with manual, Famicom version. Right now, going for five hundred and sixty dollars. That is great price, but that is crazy. 
Isn't that about uh, how much money you threw out in the trash with your retro free? It wasn't even that much. No, I know. I know. <laughs> uh, hey, Clock Tower is ninety five dollars. Oh wait, Ooh. no, that's from somebody else. That's from somebody else. Oh, I still talk. have Clock Tower. No, nope. no, you uh, want to look up? You want to look up pricing ones? Look up Ill Bleed on Dreamcast. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, but, and they got a great, they have 220, as of this recording on April 24th, uh, they have 224 games up mm-hmm. for sale. Again, all Jap. I don't think I've seen us all Japanese. Um, and you know, relatively speaking, you know, double dragon two $120, uh, Gradius three $45 mm-hmm. wrecking crew 111. So they got some interesting, interesting games. It's just a matter of now it, and here's what I like. It should be a little easier to find some of those uh, Japanese games that, like, they have a different title over in Japan. Tokyo that, Doki Panic. Exactly. No, not only that, but, like, here, Kung Fu or, Master. Yeah. Here in the U.S., Kung Fu Master. Over in Japan, it's called Spartan X. Right. But what they do is they'll say Spartan X, you know, parentheses, Kung, Kung Fu. Fu Master. Exactly. Right. So they'll tell you what it's about. That's like Castlevania. Like, if you mm-hmm. look up Castlevania. Mm-hmm. I don't want to pronounce what that is in Japanese. <laughs> so, um, so it looks like a great lineup. I, I think the prices seem to be fair. Uh, you know, Star Wars two hundred sixty four dollars, which actually I think is fair. Mm-hmm. Um, the one I keep eyeing though, and I got to figure out if this is one of the ones that I asked you to pick me up when you were there. Uh, it's a copy of Salamander, uh, which is basically our life force. I thought I did pick that up for you. But here's the thing though, because I don't remember my cartridge being a translucent blue carts oh like might this have, one is. maybe maybe it was a different yeah they had different yeah carts. i don't know like i just i like the look of this cart so i don't yeah, I was, yeah I, I gotta take a look at it but i would i would pull the trigger on this one it's not too bad at all then pull the trigger so, on it but what is i think what i found interesting was i think there is a warranty which i find kind of weird uh it's going mm-hmm. from so far so no um it's a uh, standard uh, for um, eBay? super potato. No, oh, super potato. Like when I bought stuff, like they try, like I, they, they were so cute trying to explain the warranty part to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, they managed <laughs> to say like I had like thirty days or something like that, um, which was great because I would look at them and just smile and be like, okay, sure, <laughs> I'm definitely not returning it. <laughs> oh, here we go. And this answers your question. We combine shipping, save your there shipping you costs. There you go. You purchase more than one item. Please contact us before you make a payment. So I guess they can give you a price. Yeah, because like that's what I would do. I would essentially like buy multiple things and then just get one shipping cost. It's yeah, because yeah. if you're paying twenty bucks to ship, you might as well get like three or four things. Yeah, no, I don't blame you. You know. Uh, all right, so definitely check out again. It is uh, Super Potato underscore Retro underscore Games. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've only been up for like Anthony said, I think for about a week, week and a half. Yep. Um, they already have one hundred percent positive feedback with ten responses. And uh, yeah, definitely, definitely check them out. They got some great stuff on there. Uh, yeah, and I like I said, I highly recommend them. My my Japanese video game collection is pretty substantial thanks to Super Potato. <laughs> awesome. Um, and Book Off was the other store I would go oh, to. Oh, that's right, Book Off. Yeah, I remember Book that. Off? Yes. Yeah, I was so happy I, when I found Book Off in um, L.A. It was <laughs> one in L.A. and I'm like, wow. I was like, that's cool. Oh, that's the one that we went to, right? Yes, I believe so. Or maybe just outside LA or something like that. Yeah, it was right. It was outside LA. I think it was more towards Long Beach. Awesome. Um, but yes. All right, cool. Um, so you got this. I mean, you do have an extensive collection of of Famicom games and even some Super Famicom games. Yeah, not a, not a huge collection, but I have a yeah. decent collection. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. It, like, do you like when you are in that? And I know it's kind of on again, off again. But like when you get in that collecting mood. Mm-hmm. Do you focus like do you focus on a system or do you be like you know what let me get this type of genre of gaming like you ever kind of yeah um no I kind of get in the mood of like um it's console based so it's like, oh, like okay. I'll look like I'll look at my collection and I'll be like hey why don't I have this game for Dreamcast and then I start looking at Dreamcast games and I'm like oh I was like there are a few games on Dreamcast I want to get so I kind of get like into that mode okay. um so a perfect example is like, I think my Resident Evil 3 game, I don't know what happened to it, but I don't, I no longer have it for Dreamcast oh. and I don't know why. Oh. Um, so like, and so I've been thinking for a while now, it's like, oh, I need to pick up Resident Evil 3. And then I'm looking at my dream class cast collection and I'm like, there are a couple of other games that I had before <laughs> that I'm missing. So I'm like, I don't know where these went. Like games literally just disappeared. Um, you mean, so, you don't, you didn't assume you had your entire collection, went and bought the system and realized you have nothing. 
Yes. Okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. that that's somebody else's problem. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, no, no. I'll get more in a console mood where it's like, you know what? I feel like playing my Dreamcast. What? And then I just go and start shopping for Dreamcast games. All right. Um, yeah, I'm kind of in, I kind of go in the same mode. Um, like I'll focus on a system, especially like if I have a new, like, um, for a while I was going handheld, mm -hmm. um, cause I broke out my game boy and stuff like that. But now I think I'm going to be switching focus, uh, person, this is personally speaking. Um, and I'm curious people out there, you know, listening and watching, uh, you know, if you ever, like when you start collecting, do you focus on a, a like Anthony said, on a, on a system or as mm -hmm. I said, like on a genre, but I think it's time, uh, at least for me, I don't know about you, to start focusing on turbo graphics games, a system that really went in the U.S. somewhat under the radar. Yeah, it did, especially because it predated the 16, the other 16-bit consoles everybody knows, which are Genesis mm -hmm. and uh, Super Nintendo. Yeah, and uh, of course, we've talked about it before. I think we each, I think, only knew like one person who had a turbo graphics. Yep. And even then, we're like, because I remember I'm like, what is this? Like, why'd your parents get you this when there's a Nintendo and a Genesis that's yep. available? <laughs> no, exactly. It's just strange. So, uh, uh, but it was, like you said, it was one of those things where it's just like, it just did not compete well with the other two. Mm -hmm. That's all. I think, um, and maybe it was just because like Sega and Nintendo by that time already kind of dominated the marketplace more Nintendo than Sega. I so. think that's what it was. You know, Hudson Soft tried, I don't know if they really ever wanted to fully throw their hat into the ring. Uh, against Nintendo and against uh, Sega, because a lot of times, a lot of, especially you see it nowadays with some of these companies, like instead of going after the head cheese, you kind of just stick to your own guns and be like, you know what, we're just going to focus on us. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that works. Yeah. And I have to give them credit also for um, game design, because if you look at their cartridges, they're essentially larger versions of what the Switch games have become. Much larger. Yeah. yeah. But you know what I mean? Like a very, it was a very interesting design for a cartridge. Mm -hmm. It was like it was a new format. Uh, well, so. not too new. Remember, Sega well, did use those those that format as well. True. So. But I just, I don't know. I just like the cards. Oh, like no, it's very, you know, you know they're called Hue cards. Hue cards um, yeah. And it was very, you're right, you know, to have a game on this, like a credit card kind of, sort of. Mm -hmm. um, and and what was interesting was, of course, with the TurboGrafx-16, it was like five, there was five different, almost completely different, um, you know, type of formats. You had the Hue card, you have a Super Graphics mm -hmm. card, CD-ROM, Super CD-ROM, and then Arcade cd-rom and they all offered their own graphics music style mm -hmm. gameplay and you know when you think back on it on the history of games some games that are even especially some that are in my top 10 i don't know about your top 10 are games that were either exclusive or originally on turbo graphics yeah like splatterhouse splatterhouse for sure bonks adventure bonks as well yep um you know some amazing uh for it's weird for a genre of pinball turbo the turbo graphic 16 kind of had a couple of humdingers yes. for, for pinball games which yeah, is weird. I, yeah i don't know what it was like i guess they just felt like bringing pinball to your home <laughs> in a video game was just going to be appealing so yeah. alien crush and devil's crush yeah, and um, I have. I think I have one of those. I think I have Alien Crush. I think I have Alien Crush. I think you got me the Japanese version. Did I? Well, of Alien. What, what Crush. do I have? Hold on. I know I have a very small handful of Hue cards, most of which you got me from Super Potato. I have a handful of. Uh, I have a handful of Turbo Graphics games. Now, granted, these all came from um, Japan, mm -hmm. and for the most part, they are. Some of them are still sealed. <laughs> so, uh, first one though was uh, yeah, Battle Royale with the, with the cover, which I showed yep. recently. Great right? game, which was really cool. Um, it was oh, it's uh, Devil Crush, Devil's Crush. Okay, yeah, so yep. Devil's Crush, um, Bomberman '93, a game that yes. originated on Turbo Graphics. Well, made it big on Turbo Graphics, and now it's all over the place. Big on Turbo Graphics, uh, a game I've never opened, but I want to try, uh, and I should try it on my Retro Freak, but uh, Maniac Pro Wrestling. I don't think I've ever played that one. That's interesting. Yeah. So 
Uh, and then uh, Stratego, remember the board game Stratego? <laughs> yes. When I saw that, I was like, okay, I have to buy that. And it was only like 10 bucks. Uh, and then of course, Splatterhouse. Of course. Yeah, awesome. which I bought. What? <laughs> My cat likes Splatterhouse. So um, <laughs> So yeah, so like that that that's pretty much yeah, that that's my Turbo Graphics collection, and again, all from Japan because I bought them all at Super Potato. Mm -hmm. um, but still, you know, uh, pretty like all of those like to me. And granted, I haven't played them all, but like the I, I you know I read up on them, and they were all pretty solid games. So at least Definitely. I bought them for the fun factor. Myself. Oh no, no, no absolutely. You know. uh, also, you know, Turbo Graphics had uh, some great shoot 'em ups. R Type, yep. um, was big on that. The R Type series. Uh, and then, of course, before uh, I think Symphony of the Night took over the top spot, probably the best, and even nowadays, still heralded as one of the best Castlevania games, uh, as we know it, Castlevania Dracula X. Yep, Castlevania Dracula X, which eventually made its way to Super Nintendo, I want to say. It, it did, but it was edited, so yes. it wasn't the same. Mm -hmm. um, and you can, of course, you can play the original uh, Castlevania Dracula X on the uh, TurboGrafx Mini. It's on there. Yes. Uh, actually, and and you know, speaking of wit, and this is a testament to this system that that again that no one really was aware of back then. Uh, the TurboGrafx Mini of all the minis that came out, I think mm -hmm. we've mentioned this before. I think the TurboGrafx is one of the best minis. To have I think, come out. I think it's arguably the best. And I think yeah. the reason why is because it came out kind of late in the mini, you know, mm -hmm. release windows. So I think they just took what worked for the other ones and then just made it better. Fair like I, I like I do think that it's my favorite ones by far. Now, granted, I never opened my PlayStation one for good reason, but um <laughs> and my Commodore 64 one, which again oh. I bought in Italy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's all in Italian. So there you go. No, it's it's still all it's all in English, but oh, it's like, okay. uh, but I've never I never opened it. It's just that I was there, it was on the shelf, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> why not? Yeah, what's what did you bring back from Italy? I got you guys a bunch of magnets, and I got myself some video games. There you go. Sounds oh, good and then I and I also brought back from Italy, uh, Low Hobbit. Remember? No, I bought on Xbox. I wanted to get just a game. <gasps> yes, I wanted to get a game in Italy just to say I bought a video game in yes. Italy. So I bought the Hobbit on Xbox, and but it's Low Hobbit. Low, yes, I remember that now. <laughs> Low Hobbit. <laughs> I mean, you should try to see if it works. What? What? You're such a what? Get, oh, come here. You're such a whiner. Come on. Oh, here we go. And back on the show. Whoa! Oh. Almost slung him all the way over. There we go. <laughs> I, and he stops. Is like a child, like a he, he's just very a child. Yeah, he's been very needy lately. What can I do? <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> King of the castle. <laughs> Basically, who's in charge here? It's not me. <laughs> not me, right? It's all you. It's all you. Anyway. So, so yeah, so I'm going to be looking out for some Turbo Graphics games. Uh, I think I'm going to be focusing on that because with, even though, and again, I, you know, don't take it as a complaint about analog, just some concerns about analog. Mm -hmm. When their duo goes on pre-order, which is going to be the Turbo Graphics and the Turbo Graphics CD in one unit, I'm going to pre-order it. So I might as well start buying up. Yeah. My copy of Jim Power and the Lost Dimension on TurboGrafx CD has officially shipped. Oh, that's good. So, yep. So that's on its way. That was a Kickstarter. So at least I have one CD game to play on it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I want to start collecting uh, those those Hue cards because I did download some TurboGrafx games on the Wii Virtual Console mm -hmm. because they had access to the uh, TurboGrafx library. Yep. And that's where, like, that's really where I first started playing a lot of these TurboGrafx games. Um, so, because I never owned the original system, but I think with that being my main focus now, A, it's going to be a lot more difficult to find games because I don't really see them out there that often, mm -hmm. like in flea markets or, or even game on usually doesn't have too many. I mean, they got an influx recently, which I can't wait to get over there, but normally speaking, they don't normally carry turbo graphics. So it's no, going to be interesting normally. to find yeah, exactly. And when you get over there, I'd appreciate it if you sent over some prices to me. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Yeah. So, all right. So, uh, and then um, other than that, uh, do you have any news or anything? I don't really have to check the, the front there. I do. Hold on a second. Okay. <laughs> don't don't pull your arm. Yeah. Let me check. Let me he's check. asleep. This freaking cat is asleep. Oh, yeah. No, he's sleeping. He, <laughs> he's going to sleep right now. 
That is fantastic. And he's purring like crazy. <laughs> so, is he hanging on to you enough where you can let go of him? No, no, oh, okay. let go of him. He's gonna slide <laughs> off. So. <laughs> So anyway, uh, so this is phenomenal. Please tune in on YouTube. <laughs> got, some, got some news here. Uh, okay. So one thing, I don't know if we talked about this one, but um, the uh, Blizzard Arcade Collection. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you, um, they, uh, a couple weeks ago, they got an update. Oh. Uh, with two new games added to it. Really? Yeah. Oh, so, and, so the latest update um, added do you remember the game The Lost Vikings? Yes, that's actually one of the games that's on, I think, already the collection. Yes, so they yes. added the sequel, oh, The okay. Lost Vikings 2, mm -hmm. um, and then RPM Racing, which I don't know if you remember. I think that's a sequel to, or, or a sequel or prequel to the current rock and roll racing that was on the collection. Exactly. So they added a couple of sequels to that. And so... That's that, pretty cool. Yeah, so if you have the blizzard collection or if you're looking for the blizzard Which collection I I, yeah the arcade collection there are now two new games and that that's a play on it that's an update that's not a dlc no it says it's an update that's so, now that's cool like to actually yeah. add games to a collection like that yeah well that's kind of like what the nintendo switch online does you know uh well, with the nes library and the super nintendo library true, but this is like a third party so you don't normally you're not used to seeing that very true uh very very true um, and then we talked about Mortal Kombat. Jesus Christ, are you really sleeping? He, he's sound asleep. He's out cold. Look at his paw. Oh, no, oh, there he goes. He's on. Oh, yeah. so you, okay. you moved me, human. Do you want to move? Okay. Oh, there he goes. Jesus. Bye bye. Now he's on the couch. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, freedom. <laughs> get, get the blood flowing back yeah. in his arm. <laughs> anyway, um, so there was news. I, I don't know if we even brought it up on here yet mm -hmm. or if we forgot to last week, but there was news that. Um, the final season of Castlevania will be coming to Netflix on May 13th. Oh, yeah. No, we didn't talk about that. No, we didn't talk about that. So very excited about that. Uh, what is it? Season four, I believe. I, I want to say four. Yeah. Yeah. Season four. Uh, I'm looking forward to whatever threesome they uh, cough up in this one. <laughs> Some super orgy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> looking, for, looking for a super orgy. Um, so it will have uh, 10 episodes. Oh, Okay. Um, so we got 10 episodes and that's similar to season three, season three. That's what I thought. Episodes. Okay. However, that's not the end of the news hmm. because deadline Hollywood reported when this news broke, um, that there is a spinoff in the works. Really? No details hmm. on what the spinoff is going to be, but we are going to, in fact, see a Castlevania, or at least that's the news right now. Whether they go through it, it is another story. But a Castlevania spinoff is in the works, so Castlevania will not be ending just with um, this season four. Yeah, season four. So let's just let's keep an eye out for that iteration. Because remember, this version of Castlevania is basically based on Castlevania three. Correct. I would love to see. You think they'd go into like a? I know no news is broke on it, but maybe like Symphony of the Night. Focus on Alucard? Yeah, it could be that. Um, rumors are prequel. I don't, know okay. that, I don't know what that means. Maybe it's just Dracula before this or something. Simon, go with Simon Belmont. Or maybe go with Simon. Could be interesting. Mm -hmm. um, since Castlevania 3 is 100, 100 years later. Or I don't remember the time. Yeah, it's just a number. This. Right. So I would, And I would love for them to go back and do Simon Belmont because Simon, of course, Castlevania 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? And who doesn't want to see Castlevania 2 brought to the animated stage? So Some um, people can pass. Yeah, some people can pass. Um, so there's news there, so keep a lookout for that. And then the, the only other thing that I have mm -hmm. um, is we have a special retro birthday. Oh, do we? All right. Uh, we do. And actually, it's, it's kind of a double retro birthday. <laughs> oh, okay. So we are celebrating... Um, on when was it i want to say april 25th which uh would be this past sunday yes from when this the drops. 35th anniversary Ooh. of probably your favorite shoot 'em up or the first shoot 'em up you've ever played gradius wow and not only is it the 35th retro birthday of gradius but you should know this it is also the 35th retro birthday for the konami code because the konami code debuted in Gradius. Everybody knows it through Contra, mm -hmm. but Gradius was the first game to actually have the Konami code. Wow. I wish I had my uh, I wish I had my Wild Bills mug I have that has a Konami code on it. Mm -hmm. Um 35 years. Holy cow. 
35 years of Gradius and the Konami Code. You know, Gradius is one thing. It's a game. Like, it's meant to be out there. You know, the Konami Code was always meant for just the testers. Obviously, it was never meant to get out, and it did, and it became a phenomenon onto its own that made it, I think, even to, I'm sure there's references in pop culture that are aware of what the code is. So that's, I think it's more impressive about the code than with, because think about it, like, who remembers the code to get to Mike Tyson in Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, other than you, because I know you have a good memory. Uh, (laughs) I I actually don't remember that code. Okay, fair enough. You know what I mean? Like, who knows all those codes? But the Konami code stood the test of time. So that it did. Congratulations to both. Exactly. I need to get a game genie. Now you just reminded me. Game uh, genie. Wow. I need a game genie. Because now I don't feel so bad using one. <laughs> I, I never had, like, I had one when I was a kid, but I never really used it because I was always like, ah, I don't want to cheat. I just want to play through the games. <laughs> Doesn't the Retro Freak have one built in? Uh, it might. I don't know. I, I, feel like it, I feel like it did. I don't know. Why. Uh, but anyway. Yeah, Konami Code turning 35, which is great. Um, you know, absolutely. I, I could not get Contra, through Contra without that code. <laughs> That's just face facts. Um, and I know there are plenty of people who can. It's just that I was never the type of person to... I used to play a game on repeat, but I never played it on repeat to the point where I had every little nook and cranny memorized in a game. Fair enough. So I always needed that Konami Code to survive Contra. <laughs> Sounds good. So yeah, right. so a very happy 35th birthday to uh, Gradius. Happy 35th retro birthday to the Konami code. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. B, A, start. Yes. Get you whatever you need for Konami. <laughs> um, yeah. That's awesome to hear. And then uh, I think uh, finally we can wrap this up um, by saying that, you know, talking about the analog, talk, talking about turbo graphics. There's actually a newer video game system that is about to be released yes and you know it's funny in a way where a lot of times you know systems may go from like the home console to handheld mm-hmm. you know genesis to the nomad turbo graphics you were able to use the same card handheld if you have turbo graphic express the switch is designed to do both yep. but this is a little um a, a little uh, uh system that's going the opposite it started handheld but now it's going to the home like to the television itself yep and we're talking about the Evercade with the release of the, or soon to be released, Evercade Versus. Yes, um, which is really cool when you think about it. I mean, because uh, I think the big news that came out of Evercade before were going to be those handheld. It was going to be a handheld system with the cartridges that you plug exactly. in. And, and it's taken off. I mean, it's, it's very successful. Yep. Um, you can buy it on uh, Amazon. I know that for a fact. Yep. There are, I think if I did my count correct, uh, over 40 cartridges already. Yeah, and we're not. That's pretty, you know, substantial yeah, for. And we're not talking homebrews. We're talking Data East, uh, Atari, um, Namco, and uh, Interplay. Uh, yep, uh, we're, the Worms Collection. Is, exactly. Uh, a so new one. these are these are you know, Technos. These are high end games, and some recently, um, you know, uh, ones from Kickstarter like Xeno Crisis was a Kickstarter. You, yeah, you know what's funny though when you look these up on. Um, when you look these up on Amazon and correct me if I'm wrong, but like they have them listed under Nintendo DS and Sega Genesis. Uh, well, that's that. Oopsie. Yeah. That's Amazon for you. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, be- just don't know. Between all the cartridges, there's 217 games for that's, this. Yeah. That's amazing for a console. So, right there. and we've talked about this years ago. The, in fact, I had one on pre-order until I canceled it. Mm-hmm. Um, probably the, should have been the priority you kept. Probably the uh, the Evercade started off as a handheld, and it was meant to bring back that old school arcade gaming. Yep. And with again with with the collections that we started listing, you can't go wrong with these no. um, interchangeable cartridges, which is like the first time in a long time we've seen a new system do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, granted, you were able to connect the handheld to the television. Yes. But now with the uh, Ever uh, Evercade versus, this is a dedicated system. Yes. That will purposely connect to the television. Yeah, which is awesome. You can plug in four controllers. And the most interesting part about this system, and it uses those same cartridges from the handheld versions you use in the Evercade Versus. What's interesting about this is you can load in two cartridges at the same time to the Evercade Versus. That's interesting. 
So even though all the all the carts are multi carts anyway, now like if you have two that you always play all the time, yep, you, you just, just load both of them in already. That's really cool. So then when you're playing with, you know, when you're playing with friends or playing alone, you have 12 games to choose from at the same time. Bat and Bobby at most. Yeah. Uh, it has a very Nintendo feel to it because you lift the flap up and then you put the cartridges in. Nice. And you lower the flap. Um, some information about it. Let me just see if I can just read some information here. Uh, let's see. So it'll be in 1080p, full HD, uh, quad core, 1.5 gigahertz processor for you nerds out there. Nice. Hello, um, nerds. It features the best in class emulation, uh, Wi-Fi capability. So it can receive firmware updates, game updates. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, up to four players simultaneously. Shush. Do you have your cat? I have the dog. <laughs> what? I'm almost done. I'm almost, I fed you already. Uh, um, it's got the A, you know, four front controllers, the, the four, uh, four front buttons. Mm -hmm. What? Just put Thank your hand down and pet him. Thank you. No, she's too far away from me. Oh, okay. And both of us are too lazy to get close to each other. Got it. Um, I don't see a price for this right now. Please don't. I don't see a price for it right now. Uh, you just sign up for the pre-order release, nor do I see a date right now. Mm -hmm. But um, this thing looks like, again, it's not for the hardcore gamers, I would say, but for the casual, for the casual player. Can you, Trixie, please, come here. Come here. I know you're like 90, but come on. All right. Um, for the casual players or casual families, I think this is going to be uh, well worth well worth being home. And while you're talking, I'm going to mute. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I think the uh, I think the Evercade does sound like uh, a really good purchase. Um, again, it, it always boils down to the games that come out for it and if you want them. Because the other, the other issue will always be, there are a lot of games on there you may already own on another console or virtual console or something like that. But still... The fact that they keep coming out with cartridges, so it's not like it's just here's here's a limited set, buy it, it's over. They're just continuing to do it. So as long as they keep producing, I think that's a it's a great little system to consider owning. Yeah, no, they're definitely not stopping making um, cartridges. In fact, I think one of the cartridges coming up is a specific, like I'll call it homebrew cartridges with original games on them, like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, so this thing's definitely not stopping. Cool. Um, I almost picked up for the Lynx collection. That's kind of why I was doing it. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, definitely check it out. I honestly think this is a great, even if you get the handheld version, it's a great on the go system with fantastic yeah. games. So definitely check them out. Um, to put it into perspective, I think the handheld version is only like a hundred dollars, maybe. That's not bad. If I uh, know correctly. So yeah. It's not again, bad at all. Uh, Amazon, Best Buy here in the U.S., they're selling them. Cartridges go for about 20 bucks each. I'm just looking at it right now. Mm -hmm. uh, the system itself, I cannot find quick enough. Oh, uh, yeah, about 100 bucks for the, for the system, the handheld system, and three mm -hmm. games. You know, yeah, three cards. That's not bad at all. Not bad at all. Nope. So definitely check them out. Very cool. Uh, other than that, that's really about it. That's all I... I'm interested in talking about. <laughs> well, you know, and um, that's all I'm interested in talking about with you. Oh, well, I appreciate it. Appreciate the yeah, honesty. You know, no problem. <laughs> so before this dog starts barking, your cat starts uh, sleeping no, he, on your he, shoulders again. He, he's sleeping on the couch. Oh, he's done? He's out? All right. Yeah, he's out. He's out cold. <laughs> uh, and where, where can they find us? Uh, you guys can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash retro gamers podcast on Instagram at retro gamers podcast on Twitter at retro gamers pod. You can listen to us wherever you listen to podcasts or you can watch us on YouTube or IGTV. Mm -hmm. And you can also email us at email at the retro uh, That is all of it. Sounds good. And with that, it'll be another week. I'll be back home uh, next week. So uh, the background, you'll see all the pop vinyls again. And my background will not change, maybe. <laughs> awesome. Well, in the meantime, man, have a wonderful week. You have a great week as well. And we will catch you everywhere next week on the Retro Gamers Podcast.